Hello and welcome to another one of Mr. Deeping Science Lessons. For today's session you're going to need a book, a pen and a worksheet which you can download in the link below. In your books I'd like you to get down today's title, Plant and Animal Cells. For your starter activity I'd like you to suggest what part of the plant this microscope slide is from and I'd also like you to suggest what part of the animal that microscope slide is from. I would also like you to describe how you would set up and adjust the microscope in order to view these slides at a times 400 magnification. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Did you make the suggestions? These plant cells come from the leaf of the plant and those animal cells come from the stomach of the animal. I would like to know what you thought these cells were and the reasons why and you can put that down in the comments below. Describing how you would set up and adjust the microscope in order to view these slides. First you'd get your stage and you'd put it into the lowest position. Then you would insert your slide and secure it into place. You would then choose the objective lens with the smallest magnification, usually a times four. And then while looking down the microscope you would begin to raise the stage up until the image came into focus. You would then change the objective lens from your times four to your times ten. And then while looking down the microscope you would use the fine focus in order to bring that image into focus. Once that image is in focus, you would then need to change your objective lens again to your times 40, and then while looking down the microscope, you would use your fine focus again to get that image into focus. And once you've focused that times 40 objective lens, you should be at a total magnification of times 400, because the eyepiece lens will have a magnification of times 10. And if we take that times 10 eyepiece, and that times 40 objective lens and multiply them together, we get our total magnification of times 400. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at the organelles in a plant and an animal cell. We are also going to explain the function of each of these organelles and explain the differences between a plant cell and an animal cell. For our first task, we're going to need the worksheet. I'm going to talk to you about the organelles which are contained within the animal cell and as I go through it, I would like to label these organelles on your worksheet. If you haven't got a worksheet, pause the video, sketch this animal cell and once you've finished, unpause the video and then we can go through the labelling together. And right in the middle of our cell diagram we've got the nucleus and the nucleus contains genetic material called DNA. Around the outside of the cell we've got the cell membrane and the cell membrane controls what goes into and out of the cell. On the inside of the cell, we've got the cytoplasm, which is a jelly-like substance and it's where a lot of the chemical reactions of the cell occur. And then we have these organelles, which are the mitochondria. These are the sites of a reaction called respiration, which is a reaction which provides the cell with energy. Now avoid saying that they make or create energy because energy can't be created or destroyed. So either say it provides energy or it releases energy to the cell. And then we've got these tiny little dots in our cell called the ribosomes and these are the site of protein synthesis. Next we're going to label our plant cell diagram. Again if you haven't got the worksheet pause the video, sketch the cell and then when you've finished unpause the video and we'll go through the labeling together. And like our animal cell, our plant cell needs a nucleus. This contains the genetic material for our plant cell. Also like our animal cell, our plant cell also has a cell membrane to control what goes into and out of the plant cell. Our plant cell also has a cytoplasm where chemical reactions occur. Our plant cells also have mitochondria which releases energy to the plant cell. And although I haven't labelled it on this diagram, our plant cells also contain those ribosomes where the proteins are synthesised. So now we've got some new organelles in our plant cell which weren't in our animal cell. We have the cell wall which keeps the cells rigid. Animals don't need a cell wall because they are supported by a skeleton. Plants don't have skeletons but yet they're still really strong structures and that's because all of their cells have a cell wall. They also contain this green organelle called a chloroplast and the chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis, a reaction that occurs in producers where they create their own glucose from water and carbon dioxide. And as it's making all that glucose, it's going to need a place to store it. That glucose is 
all that glucose our plant cell has been making is converted into starch and that starch is stored here in the vacuole. That starch is sometimes referred to as the cell sap. So now we are able to label the organelles of a plant and animal cell. For your next task I would like to copy this table and complete it using the information around the outside. Our table has three columns with the headings organelle, plant, animal or both and then the last column is function and this is going to need to be your biggest column. The table goes down eight lines and for each one of these organelles I would like you to say whether or not it is in the plant cell, the animal cell or both the animal and the plant cell and then I'd like you to put one of these functions next to that organelle. And if you still want a challenge, I'd also like to know why do plant cells need the additional support of a cell wall? I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you've finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you filled out that table? Let's look at some answers. Let's fill out this middle column first and decide whether or not these organelles are in a plant cell, an animal cell, or both. Our nucleus is found in both plants and animals, so is our cell membrane, so is our cytoplasm, and our mitochondria. Our chloroplast is only found in the plant cell, our cell wall is only found in the plant cell, and our vacuole is only found in the plant cell. Our nucleus contains genetic material. The cell membrane controls what goes into and out of the cell. The cytoplasm is the site of chemical reactions and that mitochondria is the site of respiration. The chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis and the cell wall is there to make the cell more rigid. And the vacuole stores cell sap. The reason why plant cells need the additional support of a cell wall is because they do not have a skeleton. Animals don't need a cell wall, they have a skeleton for their support. So now we can explain the function of each of our organelles. For our next task, what I'd like to do is to read the text on the worksheet and use that information to answer the following questions. If you haven't got a worksheet, don't worry, the text is here. And the questions I want you to answer are, why do plant cells need a cell wall? Why do animal cells not have a vacuole? And describe what photosynthesis is. And if you still want a challenge, I would also like to explain why do cells in the root of a plant not have any chloroplasts? I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your answers? So why do plant cells need a cell wall? This is to add rigidity and it's required because plant cells do not have a skeleton. So why do animal cells not need a vacuole? This is because animals store starch in the liver. And if we were to describe what photosynthesis is, it is the reaction between carbon dioxide and water to produce glucose and oxygen. Did you suggest why the cells in the root of the plant don't contain any chloroplasts? In order for photosynthesis to occur, our chloroplasts have to absorb light energy. Because the cells in the root of the plant are underground, cells in the root of the plant don't receive any light, so it would be pointless for them to contain any chloroplasts. So now we can explain the differences between a plant cell and an animal cell. We've got one more task to complete before we wrap this lesson up. We've got five statements here and each one of these statements contains one mistake. I would like you to rewrite each sentence and correct each mistake, but you're only allowed to change one word in each sentence. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you corrected those mistakes? Starting at the top then, mitochondria are the site of photosynthesis. No, mitochondria are the site of respiration. There is another answer for this though. You could have also said chloroplasts are the site of photosynthesis. The cell wall controls what goes in and out. No, the cell membrane controls what goes into and out of a cell. The vacuole is only found in animal cells. No, the vacuole is only found in plant cells. The cytoplasm contains genetic material. No, the nucleus contains genetic material. Plant cells found in the leaf do not contain chloroplasts. No, it's the plant cells found in the root which don't contain chloroplasts. And that concludes our introduction to animal and plant cells. I hope you've had a great lesson and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. 
If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time.